Welcome everybody. This episode we are going to build a details page. This will request the details for one element from our API. So let me explain and give a little visual. Right now we have these three customers, which do in fact come from our API. So ID one, two, and three. However, if I want to say click one of these and bring up a new page that has everything about that customer, this is where a details API and page would come in handy. This page would also be where you edit and delete any specific customer. Now when it comes to creating a new customer, this doesn't describe any existing customer, so instead it's going to be associated with the entire list. So creating a new one, I would have a button probably on this page versus inside of these different customers. This is pretty similar to how the back end for Django is set up. So if we go to the admin site from this page where it describes all the customers, you can add a new one or you can open a specific one and get the detailed information which you can edit or you can delete the customer altogether. This is basic CRUD ability, create, read, update, delete. And that's what we want to learn how to do fully in React. I wanna share some code with you, but this is more advanced than where we are at, so you don't have to understand everything here. But this is going to be something along the lines of what we're doing, where in this one, we wanted a list of files. This is where you get data and post data. Posting data is how you add data. Alternatively, you can get a single file, and this is where you get the single file data, patch for updating the data, or delete for obviously deleting the data. You may also see put here, usually it's actually more common than patch. So it'll be split up in two different functions, one plural, one singular. The plural will have the get and post to get and add data. The singular will have three options, which is get, update, and delete data. And then you can just case inside of here to check what method is being used. So when we create a request to the backend like we're doing here, by default, this is going to be a get request. So if you right click inspect, go into network, do a quick refresh. You'll find that request in here where we are requesting data from customers. And taking a look at this, you can see request method is get. So we're going to learn to use other request methods through fetch to build full CRUD capability. So with all that information now in our brain, let's go ahead and make a details API first because that's going to be what we build off of. So we'll go into localhost 8000 customers and then we want to be able, oh, forgot the API, API. And we want to be able to grab an individual customer passing in their ID here. So this is what we want to get working. To do this, we're going to need to modify two files. First, the URL paths, and then we'll create an associated view or function to accept that. So comma after that path. And then this one's going to be API slash customers slash, and the way you parameterize is with less than greater than the type of data and then the name so int id for example views dot customer singular and then name same idea customer all right so we created that view it's going to complain there's no attribute customer on customers dot views so we'll go into there and create it to fix that error so def customer request pass all right so that's how you associate those two now we just have to define this behavior I just put pass in there so it wouldn't error out because if you don't put anything in the function body, it'll complain. Not really a mandatory step, just wanted to make a little checkpoint. So it's actually gonna be pretty similar. So I'm going to copy these lines here, paste here. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change customers.objects.all to get, because we don't wanna get all of them. We only want to get one of them. And we let the database do that versus filtering through it in our backend code. So then we need to specify which one we want with the primary key. So this is a, a name parameter. So you have to say PK equals to some value that is going to be ID, which is going to be passed in. So let's go back to the URLs real quick. This value right here is going to automatically be assigned to this variable here. That allows data to just be a single customer. Next change, we're not going to need many true, so you can delete that. And then you can get rid of the plural here, so it's just a single customer. All right, so there is our endpoint. At this point, we should be able to refresh this page. And we get 
the uh, single customer. Another quick note, if you haven't figured it out already, Django pages, you're going to have to refresh, whereas the React will automatically refresh for you. So this is a single customer. Now we can make a request to this endpoint, substituting in some value, whatever we want on the front end. So those links will be one, two, and three in this case. So let's head over to our React application and create those links. So right here where we have the paragraph, we can replace that with an anchor tag, or I'm going to use the link component from React Router. So this is going to be two, and then we'll have to substitute some value in here. For now, I'll just put the pound sign, which will point to the same page, and then import link from React Router DOM. Cool. All right, we'll save. Let's check it out. It's uh, not looking too hot, so we actually need to put those on different lines. So you could surround this with a div or a paragraph. I guess we'll just put the paragraph back in. Now each one should be on their own line. That looks a little bit better. Right now the links don't actually go anywhere because we haven't defined the URL path. So what we need to do is the link should be to slash, and I think this is from the root, so we'll say customers, and I'm going to surround this entire thing in curly braces to evaluate a single value because then I can easily plus in customer.id. This value comes from the JSON data, and we can check our page. Looking at the links down in the bottom left, customers one, two, and three. You can click one and see it goes to the correct URL. We just have to define this page and that is exactly where we're going to stop this video and continue in the next one, which will consume the details API and display the info on the page. Hopefully this video is helpful. Stay tuned for the next episode. Subscribe.